So uh, I, I'm, that's an example of what we think of as a transmedia approach, uh, sending people uh, the message not only from the show, but through other available platforms. Here's another example. This is a show on uh, Lifetime television called Army Wives. Very brief clip from an episode uh, about traumatic brain injury. The functional MRI confirms what we suspected, Colonel Burton. You're suffering from traumatic brain injury, most likely sustained during your RPG incident in Iraq. Dr. Patterson, I dove behind the Humvee when that RPG went off. Now, I caught some shrapnel, but I was mostly protected from the blast. Not exactly. The energy from that explosion went through the Humvee and through you. It literally rattled your brain. So that was over six months ago. How could I get TBI now? You didn't. I suspect the symptoms have always been there. You simply didn't notice them or chose to ignore them. We found that some soldiers with TBI can function well in the field in highly routine tasks. It's when they come home and face the challenges of everyday living that the problems more fully emerge. So in addition to consulting on that storyline, here is how we pushed that storyline out through other media than broadcast television. Here, for example, is the Center for Disease Control's Facebook page where there is a, a, a discussion of traumatic brain injury linked from that show. Here is the show's Facebook page. Uh, more than uh, almost 130,000 fans of the show are on that Facebook page. And again, there is the actress with a specially filmed interview with her talking about the character. Um, here is the uh, Army Wives, the show's Twitter page with a, se uh, a series of tweets which were written by the Centers for Disease Control and us and then placed on the Twitter feed. Here is the lead actress, uh, Wendy Davis, her official Twitter page, and she let us write tweets about traumatic brain injury and put it on their page. And the CDC's own official Twitter page, uh, which uh, is similarly about that topic. So we're getting them every way we possibly can. Uh, so I've talked about outreach to the industry, outreach to the public. Now, very briefly and uh, with a very specific focus, we also do outreach to policymakers, uh, especially with, in our work with the Gates Foundation, because policymakers in the government and in private institutions and foundations, they also watch television. And if you want to put something on their radar screen, incorporating it into the storyline of a popular television series is not a bad idea. And for example, well, we put on a, a, a meeting in Washington called Global Health in Lights, held at the Library of Congress, where we brought the executive producer of Law and Order SVU and the star, Mariska Haggerty, to talk about a global health issue. And more than uh, 100 people came, people from nine different government agencies and 10 nonprofit stakeholders were there. So we are also using specialized channels uh, to, to reach out. Um, research and evaluation is awfully important to us. We do it in two ways. One is content analysis and audience demographics. And the other is audience impact. What impact does this have on audiences? And audience impact includes measuring web traffic, hotline calls, knowledge changes, intention changes, and action changes. In the first area, content evaluation, we study what is actually broadcast. You saw yesterday uh, a description of work done at Mintif, which uh, analyzed what is on television. We have done work like that as well over now a, a 10 year period. And we also analyze what the differences are between the whole audience and also audiences of African Americans and Hispanics who are in particular vulnerable uh, health populations. We do a content analysis. And so you can see, for example, in 2009, those are the health topics that appeared in US prime time. We also look at 
audience impact. We currently have eight ongoing evaluations, including measles and vaccinations, gene, uh, gonorrhea, hepatitis C and liver transplantation, and women's self-esteem. 18 papers that have come out of our project have been accepted in academic journals, including the Journal of Communication, the Journal of Cancer Education, and uh, Cases in Public Health Communication and Marketing. Two more papers are under review, four more are in progress for submission, and over the years, over 40 professional presentations uh, and eight talks overseas at the American Public Health Association annual meeting. We take academic rigor in our evaluation process extremely rigorously. Um, just some examples. Here, uh, I showed you that 90210 bipolar uh, storyline. We analyzed and tracked what were the web statistics of the site that was on the public service announcement. And you can see in the tail end of there the spike after the broadcast of people going to the uh, Bipolar Kids uh, website. We also look at audience impact on hotlines. This is from a soap. The Bold and the Beautiful is the second most popular program on the face of the earth. More than 500 million people watch The Bold and the Beautiful every weekday. And we were able to work with them on a storyline about HIV AIDS. And so you'll see a scene between Tony and his fiance. Very brief excerpt. I'm sick, Kristen. What do you mean you're sick? The doctor gave me a blood test that Came back positive. For what? For Tony. What was the test for? HIV. <laughs> I'm HIV positive. So if you look at what happened on the calls to the government HIV AIDS hotline, you'll see on August 3rd a huge spike when he found out that he was positive, on August 13th an even higher spike when he told his fiance. You can imagine who was doing the, the, those calls. Um, audience knowledge, people who watched that episode of Law and Order about fat, this is what happened when they were tested before and after to be asked what are the possible health consequences of obesity. Huge increase in African American audiences of their understanding about uh, uh, those issues because they relate to that character. Um, uh, a, a telenovela, we work with Spanish language uh, television as well. Uh, a Thief of Hearts, I'll skip the clip, uh, but just to show you that the impact of that clip on audiences, their knowledge of uh, breast cancer treatment <laughs> options, the stories about a pregnant woman who was diagnosed with breast cancer, and you can see between pre-test and post-test the impact of uh, radiation therapy, why ra that radiation therapy is a, is a treatment for lumpectomy and what ma when mastectomy uh, is recommended. Um, impact on intentions. Again, that Law & Order SVU episode, how likely are you to diet in the next month? Pre-test and post-test with the biggest spike among African Americans. How likely are you to exercise in the next month? Again, pre-test, post-test. Um, numbers, a series that was mentioned before. Uh, there was an episode that we consulted on whose final scene that I will not show you because we're running out of time. Uh, uh, show it's about transplantation, and the uh, one of the lead characters says, "I went to the Department of Motor Vehicles and I became a donor, uh, which means you get a pink dot on your license, so that if you're in a fatal crash and the police or medical technicians discover you, if they see that pink dot, that means you have agreed to be an organ donor and they can harvest your organs." Well, I'm now officially and. Uh, 10.3% of people who were non-donors said that the numbers episode motivated them to become 
an organ donor. Uh, we have an advisory board, and it is co-chaired by the president of the Writers Guild, whoever that president happens to be. So uh, we are both in the Writers Guild, and we also have academics and public health specialists and people generally from the entertainment industry. I'm going to close by, uh, I've given a very rosy picture. It doesn't always work, uh, or at least doesn't work the way we want. Uh, there was a show on ABC premiering called Eli Stone. And the day before it premiered, none of us knew anything about it, there was an article in the New York Times saying that the uh, ABC drama takes on science and parents. The storyline of the show was Eli Stone is a lawyer, and he takes on the case of a young woman who is autistic. And the parents want to sue the drug company that was responsible in their minds for her autism because the vaccination she received used as a preservative a mercury derivative. This is one of the great urban <laughs> legends. It is not true that mercury in vaccinations is a cause of autism. However, it made great television. And the, the, uh, the real uh, preservative, thimerosal, has been banned for years and years while the autism curve has uh, kept up. But here's an extremely brief final clip from this show. Here is what the New York Times article said was coming. The first lawsuit alleging a connection between tobacco and cancer was filed in 1954. But it took 30 years for a jury to award a single dollar for something we now all accept as patently true. Is there proof Mercuritol causes autism? Yes. Well, there isn't. And we were horrified that this was about to go on the air. And we were able to do one thing. Because of our relationship with the ABC network and Disney, the parent, we were able to get to the right executive in the corporate office. And so at the end of this show, in which he gets a conviction and proves that uh, the drug company was responsible and, and in effect saying, don't get vaccinated because it'll make you autistic, we couldn't get that to change, obviously. But we were able, at the very last minute, to get this card to be displayed on air at the end of the show. So at least for people who were horrified by what they saw and wanted to know more, at least we were able to get uh, a link uh, and phone number to the Centers for Disease Control so that people could get some accurate information. So thanks so much for your attention. Really happy to be here.